is from. And the power will not be given if we are not thirsty. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow. Tell me. Tell me now. Shall flow rivers of living water. Hold on now. I know that many people mention baptism, baptism, baptism in the Holy Ghost. But can you tell honestly that rivers of living water are flowing from within you, gushing out from within you? And if rivers of living water, if they are there and there's so much that they are flowing out and gushing out of you. There'll be freshness inside. We'll not be getting tired every time we we'll walk a few steps. And every time we we'll read the Bible, we'll not be dozing on the Bible. If rivers of living water, if those rivers abide in us and they're flowing out, the people who live with us and the people who interact with us, they will know rivers flowing out of him, out of her, unto me. They will not say, every time I meet brother so and so, I get discouraged. Every time I meet sister so and so, it's like, you know, I'm just fagged out, totally tired. I know he knows the Bible, he quotes Bible, quotes Bible, but you know the way he quotes the Bible, every time I get near him, every time I get near her, it's like I am crushed and destroyed. We need to check up. Instead of just saying, baptize, baptize, he says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Look at verse 39. But they speak he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him shall receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Look at John chapter 14, verse 16. It tells us, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, another comforter, another comforter, that ye may abide with you forever. Now Christ was a comforter to the disciples, and any time they had any challenge, he will comfort them, care for them. Now he said, I'm going away, but don't be sorrowful. When I'm gone, I will send another like me. Another effective in comforting like me. Somebody says, I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. A little problem. A little challenge will set him crying, set her crying. And he cannot point to anywhere in the Bible that will give him comfort. The comforter is absent. But he's claiming that the comforter is present. When we're baptized in the Holy Ghost, he says, I know that comforter will come and he will abide with you forever tonight is that night look at verse 17 verse 17 even the spirit of truth look at that the spirit of truth now somebody says i have the holy ghost and uh, he's reading a book and there's error in that book he cannot detect somebody says it's baptized in the holy ghost and he hears something weird, strange, not according to the scriptures, and he cannot tell. And yet I'm baptized, I'm baptized. Hold on, my brother. Is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. 
and he for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you when you are saved the spirit of god bears witness you are a child of god he dwelleth with you when you are sanctified the spirit of god bears witness he has accepted your consecration he has purified you and he has refined your life the spirit which you but the still is step further he shall be in you when you were saved christ was not dwelling inside those apostles but now when the holy ghost comes he the spirit of truth and the spirit of power and the spirit of grace the spirit of understanding and the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of fire from the altar from heaven will dwell in you look at verse 26 it says in verse 26 but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things look at that a portion in the spirit he shall teach you all things you ask somebody he says you know what i'm baptized in the holy ghost i talk in tongues and then we'll say which one comes first the resurrection of the dead and the rapture of the saints i said uh -uh, i'm not a bible scholar that one i don't know which one comes first the great tribulation or the second coming of the lord i heard our pastor saying something about it before but now i don't remember when you are baptized in the holy ghost it says he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance what message did we hear about christ in the morning mm. anyway it was a good message i like the message uh -uh, not like the message what did you hear in the morning well to be honest I don't remember when we have the holy ghost it shall bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you that's what we have our portion as we are baptized and immersed in the holy ghost look at john chapter 15 in john chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 26 but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. He'll show you Christ, Christ on earth, Christ on the cross, Christ who rose from the dead, Christ at the right hand of the Father right now, he shall testify of me. Look at verse 27. It says, and ye also, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, empowered by the Holy Ghost, enveloped by the Holy Ghost, energized by the Holy Ghost, and ye shall also bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. Look at chapter 16 of John, verse 7. John 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient. It is profitable for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you but if i depart i will send him unto you verse 8 and when he is come he will reprove the world of sin 
baptized in the Holy Ghost is calm. And then somebody is doing something naughty, something evil, something sinful. And you say, ah, my friend, well, beyond this now, we should have graduated from this level. How about this? Ah, is it bad? I didn't know that. That is bad. I didn't know it's wrong. And you see, you have the Holy Ghost. When he is calm, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Then in verse 9, of sin, because they believe not on me. Verse 10, of righteousness. Because I go unto my father and you see me no more verse 11 of judgment because the prince of this world is judged verse 12 i have yet many things many things many things to say unto you but she cannot bear them now because the Holy Ghost had not come to them in that full baptismal measure. And there are people like that. They are believers. They are saved. They claim I'm sanctified. They claim I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. When you open the Bible and you want to talk about the subject the Holy Ghost is emphasizing today. They're shifting from side to side on their chair they cannot bear the teaching of the word of God all they want water and milk of the world and wants to go beyond the water and the milk of the world they're feeling some discomfort but when he is calm what you cannot bear now then he reveals, look at verse 13, how be it, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and I will show you things to come tonight. Your story will change. Your experience will go higher. You'll have the real baptism, immersion, enveloping, empowering of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Number three there. Number three, the proof of being baptized in the Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 but they shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you that's the proof that's the proof it's not shaking power it's not falling on the ground power it's not foaming out of the mouth power it's not repeating the tongues of the pastor of the reverend of the bishop that is spoke from the microphone power that's the portion we have and that's the proof of the baptism immersion in the holy spirit but you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem you'll be a witness when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the most part of the earth. Look at Micah chapter 3 verse 8. Micah chapter 3 verse 8. But truly, I am full of the power of the Spirit of the Lord. What's the evidence? And of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression 
and to Israel is seen. A preacher says he's baptized in the Holy Ghost and he's preaching and he comes across the word of God that will convict people of their sin and he says I cannot read that one I cannot explain that one if I read that if I explain that they will not like it she will not like it. he will not like it and so he passes on and he never talks about sin that God condemns in every life only about love about grace about the goodness of God is a motivational speaker is not a preacher of repentance and faith in the Lord Micah said truly honestly sincerely I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel a sin. Look at Acts chapter 4, reading from verse 31. And when they had preached, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they speak. And they speak. They were filled with the Holy Ghost, refilled a fresh baptism in the Holy Ghost. And they speak the word of God with boldness. What the use of speaking in tongues without boldness? Speaking in tongues without ability to declare the word of God with boldness. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, and with great power. That's the proof of the Holy Ghost. He has come. And when he comes, he gives us understanding. When he comes, he, give, he gives us the boldness and the courage and the confidence and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Looks like your time has come. I said, looks like your time has come. And the Lord himself, faithful to his promises, will give us the real thing, the real power, and the real outpouring of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Point number two now. Point number two, the partakers of fresh baptism in the Spirit. Luke chapter 11, reading from verse 9. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Amen. Amen. Seek, and ye shall find. Amen. amen. Why is the amen going down? Amen. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. Look at verse, verse 10. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened look at verse 13 in verse 13 if ye then being able know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your heavenly father give the holy spirit to them that ask him when you had salvation you asked when you had sanctification you asked and as you are going to have the infilling and baptism in the holy ghost you ask three things number one praying for the promise of the spirit number two perceiving the presence 
of the spirit number three possessing the power of the spirit number one praying for the promise of the spirit look at second kings chapter 2 verse 9 second kings chapter 2 verse 9 and it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Ask him for the promise of the spirit let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me james chapter 1 verse 6 in james chapter 1 verse 6 but let him ask in faith you're saved let him ask in faith you're sanctified let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed it tells us that we must ask in faith number two number two there perceiving the presence of the spirit now you saying to someone and you said it shall come to you. And not only to visit, but to dwell, to abide, to stay in the same habitation house where you are. When he comes, you will know. When he stays, you will know. If he's present there, you will know. You're not saved. I asked him to come. I don't know whether he has come. You will know. I asked him to abide with me. And abide with me forever. As Christ has promised. If he is abiding there, you will know. You will perceive the presence of the Spirit. Acts chapter 10. Verse 33, immediately therefore, I sent, Cornelius talking to Peter, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all present here before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. That's the attitude of anyone who is going to receive the freshness of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We're all here and we're present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. And then in verse 44, look at that. What Peter Yet speak these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them. How many of them? All them. How many of us? Tonight. I said tonight. The Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word. Now, how do we know that is now present? That we perceive that is now present. Look at verse 45. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, surprised, amazed, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, verse 46, for they heard them speak with tongues.
Peter did not teach them how to speak in tongues. He didn't say, don't speak your Greek language. Repeat after me. And then faster and faster and faster. And then now you've got nothing like that. All these things that people, what would do we do that? And they give you the fake counterfeit. And you don't have the real comforter, the spirit of truth. It says, for they heard them speak of tongues and magnified God. Then answered Peter, verse 47, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we as well as we in the same manner that we received nobody teaching us how to speak in tongues now when we have salvation salvation comes of the joy of salvation and nobody tells us at the point of salvation you have confessed your sin rejoice 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 start laughing start laughing then you have salvation uh -uh. why are we deceiving the people when the salvation really comes it will come with joy it will come with the peace of god at sanctification we don't tell anybody to conjure and think and imagine peace and calmness the deep peace of god in their heart no when they have the sanctification that the peace of god will be there the same thing with the holy ghost we don't have to tell anybody don't talk english again don't talk uh, your bible language your epic or don't talk your you know potter language anymore uh, just say uh, you know say whatever if a uh, bar comes to your mind bar time and all that comes to you. we don't we don't do that they said they received the holy ghost as well as we and i pray your experience will be genuine in jesus name and look at um, acts chapter 6 verse 5 acts chapter 6 reading from verse 5 and the same pleased the whole multitude and they chose Stephen a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. A man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and Stephen full of faith and power. That's the proof. He got it. You will get it. Stephen full of faith and power. Did great wonders and miracles among the people, look at verse 10, in verse 10, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which they speak. Look at number three there. Number three there, possessing the power of the spirit. The power of the spirit. Second Timothy chapter 1, we're looking at verse 6. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 therefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands verse 7 for God has not given us the spirit of fear you know some people since i started speaking in tongues and i received the holy ghost baptized i'm surprised i fear i fear the future i fear people i fear men uh -uh. that's not the holy ghost it says jesus said the holy ghost is another comforter like him and Jesus did not come into anybody's life and then make him afraid. No. When we have the Holy Ghost, 
the spirit of truth and the comforter. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. amen. For you, amen. amen. Point number three now. Point number three, the plenitude of full baptism in the Spirit. Three things. Number one, the comfort and the consolation by the Spirit. Number two, the courage for conquering in the Spirit. Number three, our completeness in Christ through the Spirit. Number one, comfort and consolation by the Spirit. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Then at the church's rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified, walking in the fear of the Lord, not wanting to offend the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. In the comfort of the Holy Ghost, they were multiplied. The comfort of the Holy Ghost were calm to your life. At home, in the office, anywhere you are, Nothing will jerk you or jolt you, frighten you, terrify you when the Holy Ghost takes residence inside us. His comfort will be there. His consolation will be there in your life fulfillment. I come to number two there. Number two, the courage for conquering in the spirit we're looking at romans chapter 8 reading from verse 1 it says in romans chapter 8 reading from verse 1 there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit verse 37 in verse 37 it tells us there nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us i was waiting for a good amen there amen. we are more than conquerors anybody there you conquer. Yeah. You conquer sin. Yeah. You conquer sickness. Yeah. You conquer demons. Yeah. Any demon. Yeah. Any demon. Yeah. Wherever they are coming from. Yeah. You conquer in Jesus' name. Yeah. Holy Ghost man. Holy Ghost woman. As you are coming like this. They'll be clearing out of the way for you. You will conquer premature death. You will not die before your time. Older, 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 and healthy. Now, there are two kinds of old people. Some people are old and frail, old and sick, old and they have old age disease, and they are managing to live and they are, it's like, why am I here? Is it not better to be up there than to be down there? And then I'm so weak, but then there's another kind of old people, old person, old and healthy, old and agile, old and standing, old and powerful. Now, let me tell you, I have a story to tell you.
the power that conquers, that conquers disease, sickness, premature death in your life. I won't tell you the story if you don't shout, Amen! Last month, March, we were in uh, Yenegua, by Elta State, south, south, like you. There was one of my daughters there. Before I came there, she had cancer. The cancer affected her breast, her body, her legs became paralyzed, hands became withered, and the cancer continued to spread, and the eyes became blind. In the hospital, the good, effective, expert medical doctors confirmed, and they said she had only one month to live. And then, on Thursday, we started the Bayelsa Crusade. And she said, Once I hear the voice, because she couldn't see anymore, carry me there. Once I hear the voice of my father, I will be well. You will be well. Let me tell my daughter now to speak to you directly. Daughter, talk to them. Thank you, Daddy, for giving me the opportunity to share my testimony. In short, I suffered a lot for two good years. I suffered. Everybody around, even my street, they thought nobody believed that I will make it in life. At first, they said breast cancer. And the doctors gave me only one month of survival. If I didn't cut off the breast, but we prayed, and I believe God. Before you know, my two legs paralyzed. I couldn't walk. My arms paralyzed, withered. This is my aunt you are seeing now that I am moving. Paralyzed, everything about me collapse my whole system collapse i cannot eat nothing i can do it if i lie down i lie down 24 hours except if i want to go and win they will carry me to go and win anything i'm doing they carry me to base my mom my husband everybody around me before i know my two eyes got blind totally blind went to the hospital they said the eye i cannot see with it again that the eyes are bad, but God kept me. For three months, more than three months, I could not eat. Even when the doctors fix drip, the vein, everything rejects, even the drip from my body. But God, this is my God that I'm serving, prove himself in the Biasa State Global Crusade. The first day, the first, very first day, immediately, our daddy in the Lord clung to the cookie after introduction. I just see a sensation from my two ends because I raised my hand with my blindness. I'm not even seeing anything. I raised my two hands. I say, I told myself as we were going. I say immediately I heard the sound of my father in the Lord. Everything about this my body, God will do it for me. That was my belief with my husband. We held our hand and prayed. Because even the doctors, they've given up. They say this for this case. Because even the leg, when they look at my age, they say it's osteoporosis. What is osteoporosis at my age? Everything collapsed about me. I cannot pull. Everything collapsed. But that first day of the crusade, immediately our daddy climbed the altar and said, In Jesus' name, that's amen. I felt as if an electric shock from my hands down to my leg. And immediately, everything about me 
Even my nails, my nails that have dropped, everything came back alive. My eyes, I can see. Since then, I'm seeing up to date. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! What God cannot do, does not exist. Somebody praise the Lord! Your time. Your time. You will conquer from tonight. Every challenge of your life, you conquer in Jesus' name. Number three now. Number three and final. Our completeness in Christ through the Spirit. My brother, I'm looking at you there, you are complete. Yes, yeah. sister, daughter, you are complete from tonight. Yeah. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Verse 10, it says in verse 10, And ye are complete. And ye are complete anything missing your body god will supply and ye are complete your eyes and ye are complete your ears and ye are complete your backbone and ye are complete and all your bone structure and ye are complete your spiritual life and ye are complete job work profession, prosperity, and ye are complete. In your family, husband and wife, you are barren now, barrenness is gone. And ye are complete, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Amen. I say amen for you. I shout amen for you. It's bowed and eyes closed. Christ wants to come into your life and make you complete. But you have to give him chance. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, me unto him, fellowship with him, and soak with him. It's knocking at the door of your heart right now. And if anyone, anyone, salvation is for everyone. Everyone here, everyone in every location, all over Nigeria, all over Africa, all over every continent, every country of the world. If anyone hears my voice and he opens the door, Christ is ready to come in now. It's about a nice close. You want to be complete in Christ so that everything in your life is supply, but it starts with forgiveness of your sin. It starts with salvation of your soul. Wherever you are, raise up that hand. A life of completeness is about to begin right now. Raise up that hand, raise up that hand, raise up that hand. To the left, to the right, to the center, to the front, to the back. Anyway, you are in any location over the radio, over the television, raise up that hand now. Amen. Now, if you are raising up your hand, please stand up. Completeness has come. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Stand up right there. You want Christ to come. Christ to come. He'll forgive you. He will cleanse you. He will start a, a life of fullness and completeness. He will start it in your life right now. Wherever you are, you say, I'm not, you know, I'm not happy the way I am. I'm not complete. I'm not full. There is an emptiness. There's a vacuum inside me. And I want that life. Life of completeness to start right now. Where are you? Raise up that hand and stand up. I'm praying with you right now. Hand over your life unto the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Lord Jesus, I give myself to you. Come in, come in, come in and dwell with me. He will. I'm praying for you now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
I pray for every brother, every sister, everyone standing now. I pray forgiveness will come to them. I pray freedom will come to them. And I pray all the power of sin in their lives, blot them out in Jesus' name. Let the life of fullness and completeness touch in their lives right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Keep on standing, keep on standing. Our counselors are there and they will give you the sleep to feel. When we finish that, then total, complete, full, completeness will come to every life. This is the last night you've been doing well all these nights and you've been staying, stay tonight. You'll carry your miracle back home. Our state pastor, Pastor Andrew Sagi, uh, to come and lead us at this time uh, before I come back for the final prayer. There is jubilation because he who the sun set free is free indeed. There is freedom all over here and people are so happy that they've given their life to Christ. If you are here joining us on Zoom, joining us on Facebook, on YouTube, uh, you want to uh, come now, go visit www.dclm.org forward slash connect with Christ. dclm.org forward slash connect with Christ to tell us, to indicate that you've just given your life to Christ. It's a proud moment for us. It's a proud moment for you because you are now in the household of Christ. Because you are now in as the heir of Christ. Because you now belong to Christ. We want to have your information. We want the man of God to be able to follow up with you, mentor you, and check up on you. We want to come to that link, dclm.org forward slash connect to Christ. See it on the link right now. That is the link where we can follow up with you. Our general superintendent can reach out to you. And also, we'll be able to give you some gifts to enrich you to further your life with Christ. You don't want to miss it. Don't forget, we see how the powerful prayer coming on. We just listen to the message, Christ, our power. A time when the VS has told us about the Holy Ghost baptism. You don't want to miss it because everyone is ready to get power from Christ. And I know you are there online. Please drop in the comment section right now. Tell us how you are following this message. Tell us what you are requesting. You saw that, that testimony. That good testimony from Bayasa, the woman with cancer. She was literally down. Her body was withered. Her fingers had gone. But she prayed and she believed. And on the first day, she got her healing. What are you expecting? What are you looking forward to? This is the point where you put in there and you believe in faith. You believe in the power that comes uh, in, the, in, in the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, because there is power for the hour right now. You want to join us right now online. You want to join us on Zoom. You want to join us on satellite. I'm looking forward to your comments on Facebook. I'm looking forward to your comments on YouTube. I want you to drop in your comments. Tell us what you are looking forward to. This is the point where you say, today is my day. Today is the day I'm looking forward to. Today is the day I get my testimony. Right so now, you want to go in the comment section and tell us somebody is saying, Oh, God, heal my brother. I'm seeing no more Jerry. God will heal him in Jesus' name. Caleb is saying, I receive my deliverance tonight. Job is saying, I'm completely healed in Jesus' name. Grace Oluch is saying, I receive my miracle. Uh, you want to know that there is nothing God cannot do. On YouTube, I'm also following you. For those in on YouTube, you want to put in your request right now. And tell us what you are expecting. The word of God is coming. The power of God is coming. You want to join us. Don't miss it. This, there will be power. Christ, our power. Because there is the power of the hour joining us. On YouTube, on Zoom, on Facebook. Join us. And the Lord will do you good. Don't miss it. Join us. You can see God's miracle in this crusade 
how God has kept everywhere conducive, comfortable, what God did in the wilderness, covering his children with pillar of cloud, we have experienced the same. The scourging sun was no problem to you. The Lord made everything good. And everything will continue to remain good in your life. Can I hear?